Hey guys, welcome back to another episode with the little guy. I am him, and I said that I would give you a review of the TX3 uh, when it's all done and dusted, and she is done and dusted, all fixed up and lubricated, and you know, I fixed up a, the rack in there, she was missing some teeth, so I put in some aerodite and just filed down the aerodite. Comes out pretty good, works good. Um, you know, it's good to pull it all apart and make sure that she's working tickety-boo. And then I gave her a good respray and paint and she looks fantastic. Um, I, I'm in a bit of a rush, so I'm just going to give you a quick rushed version of how to use it. Because I chucked it on Gumtree to see if anyone was interested, thinking that no one would buy it anytime soon. And i just hold on to it and use it for a while. Uh, but it was snabbled up in a couple of hours and they're coming to pick it up in a couple of hours. So... I'll smash this out and I hope it helps you guys, but because I'm rushed, I'm just going to get straight into it and uh, you're just going to have to deal with my dodgy camera work. Cameraman work. Yeah, we'll roll with that. So we'll start up here, we've got our, our spindle, sorry, our motor for our spindle, which I don't have. Usually, it's mounted here. Instead, it's got a diamond point engraver, which is down there, um, and... I'll show you how to use that in a minute, but usually there's a spindle. I think I showed you this last time, but I'll do it again. It'll look something like this. Looks something like that. It has, you know, you can change your height on it and all kinds of things like that. The one on this TX3 is a little bit different to that. Um, and if you get on the internet or you have one of these at home, you'll know what I mean. It has its own depth gauge and everything like that, so you can adjust the height to, you know, 0, 0.0 something of a mil. To really get that that depth that you're after which is awesome because that one there you can't you just go by feel you just feel how deep you go and it's got a little um copper copper like sacrificial cover there and that's what you use to brush along your plate and that wears down and that'll give you your depth by here if that makes sense if you get one you work it out but yeah you set your height you get it to zero on your plate, then you tighten him up so she doesn't move. Then you use your graticules here, and you move this up ever so slightly, you know, 0.02 of a mil or one mil, if you're that bloody keen. And then your depth will be dictated by that difference now. So your cutter will be exposed one mil or 0.1 of a mil, and it'll be scraping on this uh, sacrificial piece. And you just get others of those and replace them when they start to wear, but so it's not as good as something that has a depth gauge and you can legit set the depth and off you go which is what this one would have if I had it so usually this bar comes over here it attaches to your spindle here so then they're now connected and then this is spring loaded that's not me moving that there's springs inside there a spring and uh, that'll keep tension on your belts you'll have a belt running from the motor is it covered no belt running from the motor get there to this pulley down here and then from this pulley it'll be attached on top of your rotary spindle but i don't have that so that can just sit over there and be completely useless but that's how that works what i found is that the carbon brushes which are in here just like on angle grinders, anything cordless or corded, I should say. Um, it usually has carbon brushes to give you contact. And this one has quite large carbon brushes. So this motor is either brand new or it's designed to last a while. Um, it was about three quarters of an inch or for the rest of us, it was about three centimeters long. So really large carbon brushes, which is fantastic for longevity of your motor. Um, that's pretty much it for the motor, uh, and that's pretty much... I'll point out some other things about this thing. Okay, so there's dials and screws and levers and the usual thing that goes along with any sort of dovetails, and that's your jibs. So there's jibs on, upon jibs upon jibs, and they're all held in with your grub screws, which I love, because I love the old-style way of fixing things um, and holding things in place. It's just so good. Anyway, from here, this is not so useful sorry not useful it is useful but not useful in a way of how the machine works that just gives you 
uh, the best access to whatever you're engraving down here tiny little plug so I'll go through how you set this thing up bear with me I'm going to try and get a nice little spot here on the bloody coffee table where you can see everything and it's probably never gonna happen probably not we'll see okay bugger that I'm gonna hold it deal with it so the first thing you do when you come over to what you want to engrave you set it up in your vise with this big sucker it's got a massive 450 mil vise self-centering so it'll find its center so you've got a right hand thread and a left hand thread so when you wind it out one will move away one will move the opposite way and when you pull them together they'll move in together there's your self-centering uh, it's held in by a couple of brass squares you can just see the tops of them in there a little red dot anyway if you want to remove these for whatever reason just pull these pins out slide it off off she goes it's as simple as that they designed it really well cool machine it's uh, got these holes in the back there and on the other side obviously and that's for engraving uh, circular things like um, glasses or trophies things like that and you can get these uh, little plastic bushes and that holds onto your cup and you know I don't have it so I won't try and explain it but just know that this thing can do cups and mugs and things like that and it it turns it itself kind of like an indexing head but uh, it's just in a vise which is pretty cool and I thought that that would be handy milling and things like that but you know I'm selling it so who cares anyway once you've set your piece up in there like this you can use it just by smashing it between the jaws you get these pins these dowels in here and therefore all kinds of little attachments you can get like um, I'll show you one so you get the idea Oop. yeah same idea it's got dowel holes instead I'm using these center ones because it's small and this is just a uh, hardy little vice attachment I guess like soft jaws you can get ones that are a little segmented like tooth on a uh, like teeth not tooth teeth on a pan break or something like that so they're removable so you can put all weird shapes in there and things like that you can make up your own 3d print your own uh, go for gold but because it's got these dowels that you can put it in you can get all kinds of funky things and chuck them in and off you go which is handy so you can turn those around see small lip large lip get an extra you know centimeter or so on your on your bed size but yeah you can put those in there uh, but yeah I've just got this clamp directly in there nice and flat um, and then to use this you just simply turn said handle and as I said they'll move in and out so they've once again got your jibs and held in by grub screws and there's jibs down here and look at all these levers everywhere I'll explain what each of those does you can probably work it out but this one here allows it to move left and right. Urgh, move your bastard. Left and right. Once you clamp that, which obviously doesn't move. And this one, forward and back, the entire vice moves. And then this one you would have, uh, would have seen turning as well. This is like fine adjustment. See how it moves? That's a weird way of doing things but it's just a rotor it's just a wheel in there uh, in underneath and it's just got spring pressure on the wheel and a um, square groove cut all the way along the vise and you can just turn that wheel just to make it easier instead of pushing it by hand yeah but as soon as you lock this she's locked but those are all helpful for these your little bars which will tell you when it's supposedly self-aligned if you were to put your characters in here and stick it on zero which i haven't done it's off center if you put your center piece that center line there in line with the zero and then put everything else on the zero supposedly that would be dead center of your workpiece so you wouldn't have to uh, trial and error it or anything like that supposedly um, there's no no real point in doing that because you can just adjust it anyway you just the way I do it is I chuck my piece in and then I'll come over to my test piece and I'll get my 
stylus right here. This is a liftable stylus, so it just lifts up, let it go. That was originally rusted in and would not move, which was fantastic. But worked him out, got him working. So you lift that up. Is that going fuzzy? It is bastard. Stick him into your, your character here on the top left corner. Bam. Now we'll come back over to our workpiece and you can see that our diamond engraving tip is nowhere near where we need it to be. So then we use that one, which will now move. That's a lock, so you unlock it. You move this to wherever you need it to for your, I guess you could call it your Y axis, maybe. But now that moves, that will give me my Y. And then, once you're happy with that, lock him in place. Now she don't move, and that's nice and rigid. And then for your left and right, or your X's, you use this. Easy. Once you've found out where you want it to go, clamp him in place. Done. And then, the other thing that you need to consider is the reduction. So this works always on a reduction. 1 to 2 to 1 to 7, with all these increments in between. So you've got 2, 2.25, 2.5, 2.75, and that just works out to, you know, 1 to 2 is obviously half, 1 to 3 is obviously a third, and so on and so forth. The thing with this is, if you change that to a third, or 3, your, um, whether it be your cutter or your diamond graver, also has to be on 3. If you don't, you end up with something like I did there. Oh, it's too shiny. My T, okay, don't worry about it, but the T in there is, it's like I've put it in italics, so it's skew width. So my, my short edges will be ridiculously short, my long edges will be ridiculously long, or in this case, on a deliberate cant. Good effect if you want to do something like that, but if you just want to get the actual you just want this to look like that, then they need to be on the exact same thing, otherwise it doesn't work. Once you get them on the exact same thing, then it's just as I said. Move that, and then move your bed, and off you go. Or your vice, I should say, and off you go. Realign and go for gold. If you clamp this down, your rails that you use to put your, your letters and numbers in, and it's not horizontal, hence why it's got these on there so you can line it up. If you don't do that it's obviously going to be on a slant and if you're doing a long plaque or something like that or even a cup like I mentioned before then it's going to go skew with and your customer ain't going to be too happy. So that's pretty much it. I will see if I can do this for you somehow. Oh can you see? Oh no. Bloody hell. Don't really want you staring at my ugly mug while I'm doing this. This head is not for television. There we go. I'm only going to show you the plaque. No, that's not helpful for you, is it? That's not helpful at all. Unfortunately, this is a two-handed operation. So by two-handed, I mean as this is sitting in there now, as I trace, down and around. This is a double double letter, it's not a single letter, so I need to you know, go around it, look schmancy. While I'm doing that, I need to be providing downward pressure here. Spring loaded, that's all it is. Harder I push, deeper it goes. More times I go around, zoop, 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 zoop. That's a technical term too, zoop, zoops. Uh, the deeper she will go. So that's how it is. I will clamp it here and just show you what I'm doing. But the only thing that you need to remember, because this is so, I want, it is basic, but the thing that people forget and screw up for a while is that um, you need to release your lever in between each letter. Otherwise, you end up just scoring lines all over the place and it looks stupid. So we'll see how she goes. I've already done a T, but I'll do it again. So I'll just go over it once. Just so you guys can see how she goes. It's very smooth. Um, 
it all depends on how good your uh, how good your numbers and letters are that you chuck in there and how rigid your machine is and this thing is huge it's a big freestanding pentagraph engraver so it's quite rigid and it'll give you really accurate and good looking letters the smaller you go the more chance of getting screw ups one thing that's annoying is yes it takes a while but oops my letter's a bit rooted time to chuck that one out or fix him up anyway that's him I'm gonna dust off don't know how well you can see that it's just too damn shiny can I test nailed it with my original well you can see there the T how it's on a slant it's not the same size it's it's all over the place cool effect but probably not what you want if you want to get it right first go seeing as the majority of your engravings are a uh, a one like you don't get a second go at it you either do it or it's effed so that's how she works sorry I couldn't show you two things at once how I was using the stylus here and then the engraver there but you can work it out um, what else can I say about this thing so it is tall um, it's got massive clearance here so in the pictures that you get of these things it's got someone with a wheel rim in there and they're engraving a wheel rim so you can just imagine how big that vice is and just how big the copy bed is but it's got its own little jack which is down here <clears throat> a bit old and messed up but I did my best to make it look pretty but it's very simple you've got your little lock there that has on the inside a uh, looks like bronze a little bronze key that fits inside that keyway that runs straight up and down this shaft and that is what your vice is meant to do. You can take that vice off and you've got a central pivot point there and I was thinking if you're going to do some sort of wheel or you know something like this you could potentially do that because you now have a central surface point and uh, yeah you just have to use this which will give you you know your degrees or how many increments kind of like a DIY indexing head and then scrub your line put your numbers in there move it round scrub your line put your numbers in there move it round scrub your line put your numbers in there off you go you're going to have your own little way to make your little dials or chasing dials or whatever you want to make anyway back to it so you undo this oh shit actually I better do this with two hands in case it uh, falls on me or something stupid like that oh god how am I going to do this Come on, should edit this out, but I just don't have time. I hope you can see. I hope so. So, unlock him. Now that'll free your center pole up, and then you can lower it, twist it, do whatever you like. Further you unlock it. The, uh, you can take it completely out and now your boss will spin. I hope you can see that. But yeah, she spins. I'm just gonna lock that down because I forgot about this thing. And I've sort of um, clamped him down in there. So this is your, uh, your indicator and that tells you where your zero is if you were to move this around again. I don't, yeah, it is handy because you've obviously got this to go off with that, but your indicator's on the other side. But if you don't loosen that off enough, then it'll get jammed on like I just did there. So I just got to remove that grub screw and um, then this entire pole will be able to come, use your fingers, entire pole can come up and down hence why there's a hole in the base plate I think that pole hole there was yeah I don't know like that pole can come down 
and go through there. That's just your vice jack. So if you've got something heavy in there, you don't want to be trying to get it accurate by lifting the bugger because you can't really see what you're doing. So it's just like a any old jack. You know, up that one's down, you know. It's got little how do I put it? Shoes, I guess, or boots, spring loaded boots. You see how she just grabs onto it and pulls it down, jacks it down, runs along the shaft, and then to bring it back up, you use the other one. Similar thing, just going in the opposite direction. And up she goes. Just like that. Once you get to the top, she locks on. Good to go. Not much else to say about it. She's big, freestanding, 80, no, 88 kilos, pretty much 90 kilos of fun. Um, a little bit too big for my little miniature workshop, which is why I'm getting rid of it. But I'm sad to see it go because it does do ripper engravings. And uh, I think that vice is just too good. Like it's just a massive vice and we all know the bigger the machine, the uh, more useful it is and less frustrating when it comes to work setups and things like that. If you get a smaller machine, you'd just be kicking yourself. So I hope that this little intro into pentagraph engravers is in any way helpful, especially for someone who comes across one of these, has no idea how to use it, types it into YouTube and sees this and goes, okay, that's a little bit more helpful. Sorry, I don't have any more attachments to show you. This is all I got with it too. Thanks guys.